Hi, everybody. It's uh, Miss Downs here, and today we're going to try something different. Hopefully, this will work um, via video. I only have the one camera, so but I'm going to try and do um, perspective drawing. We're going to do a corner since we're all kind of inside. Um, corners can really teach us about connecting and how to create dimension and how to create distance um, in small spaces. So. I want to talk to you about, um, we've talked about one point perspective, two point perspective. We're going to do a, um, a two point perspective, but we're not going to be able to see where these two perspectives start. Um, we're actually going to focus just on how a corner connects everything in a room. It connects it to the ceiling, it connects it to the floor, and then those things also connect it to um, the things that are on the ceiling, the things that are on the wall, and the things that are on the floor. So behind me, I've set up a nice corner. I have my paper here that hopefully you'll be able to see well with, and you'll be able to see me actually transfer and um, show you a process that uh, I hope you'll find easy and able to use in your own home for this next project. You just need a paper, pencil, eraser, and I like to use a ruler. So hold on, let me turn around. Okay, still here. So what I like to do, I'm gonna focus on this corner right here. It's very nice because it has like this dark gray side and the white side, because then you'll be able to see the difference between the two very nicely. So I'm gonna work like you're not here um, on my little piece of paper here. I'll push that back a little bit further so you can see the whole paper. So the first thing I wanna figure out is my angle is going to be a little bit off, but I want to find out about this corner. Where do I want to place this corner on my paper? Well, there's no reason for me not to put it in the middle. I could put it over here to the side if you want me to. I could put it over to this side. But since in your screen, you don't see the entire side of this wall, that gray wall, I'm going to actually put it right here. Now you could measure it. I could go in and be like, okay, so that's about a ruler and a half, but I'm just gonna use one ruler. I'm just gonna start with that. And then everything is gonna be proportionate to that one ruler. Now the hard part about um, starting this is how do you find your angles for your ceiling that come off of this top part? Okay, so right now, I'm gonna try and see if you can see it from behind me. So I'm actually gonna take my ruler and I'm going to point it up to where that corner is, and I'm going to try and maintain that, that kind of angle. That's how I like to do it. And then I just kind of haphazardly draw that, um, that right there, that angle. So that's going to be my, probably not quite steep enough. So I'm going to actually go a little bit steeper. It's coming pretty far at me. And then my other wall is going to be somewhat parallel because it's right in front of me. So it's going to be a little bit flatter and not quite as angled as this one that's kind of coming at me. Okay, so you're able to see those. It's a little dark, I know, I'm sorry. Let me see if I can make these a little bit darker. There we go. Okay, so we've got our kind of corner started. It doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to be similar. Now, the best part is we can go to the bottom of our, our corner here, and then we can figure out where our floor and how our floor goes. Well, the nice thing is, is that because of the wall, because our walls are flat, the ceiling tends to mirror the floor angle-wise. So I could come in here and kind of do that and give it a little bit of a, and do it that way. That works. That's not a bad idea. That's not a bad, bad uh, floor. Okay, and then I can come in with my ruler again go to the bottom of the, um, the floor, to the side of the wall, okay? So 
let's see. So it's about like that. Well, no, I think it's a little steeper. Okay. So there's my floor. Okay. All right. Should use a ruler there, but I want you to really see these lines. Okay. So now in that corner, um, I've placed, there's actually a little, you can see there's a little bit of a shelf for that bird's nest or the bird's uh, cages. There's no birds in it, by the way. Um, so let's create that. So I might want to go, here's my ruler. And let's say, oh, out of that ruler, I'm going to go about, let's get on the inches. I'm going to go up about, oh, three and a half inches is where I'm going to start that. That sounds like a really good good place to kind of start that little shelf. Now the shelf you can see right here, right there, comes out a little bit. So that's why I have my little line like this. It's not exactly flat. And then I can use my ruler to go down here. Now what you'll notice if you look at the bottom, we can just use that floor line as we drew it and now just get rid of, I would just get rid of my wall space that I don't see because I can't see through right there. I can't see through it. So now I have this little space right here for my shelf, okay? So where I came out, I'm gonna use the same angle as my floor and just bring up the same angle for my the top of my shelf. And I'm just going to go all the way down like that. So I just created my shelf. Okay. Like that. Now I've made, when I did my little shelf, you see that little, that little about quarter of an inch comes out. So I can go over to where that, that and the wall comes together. So this spot right here, let me see if I can get it with the ruler right there. I'm just creating, I'm gonna use the same angle and I'm just creating it like that. Okay. So there is that little, that little section that comes out into the wall. Let me pull that closer in case I'm not able to see it. Okay. So this right here, is what I just created right here, okay? Now, if you wanted to, we could go down here. Let's do that, let's go down here. You can see that crown molding down on the bottom that just goes out on the floor. So that's real easy to do. You can kind of use your ruler a little bit. And let's say, let's measure it. Let's see, the whole wall is a ruler. So let's say that's gonna be about a quarter inch, pretty, pretty small. It's going to go up like that. It's going to go right into our, our wall over here. Then we're going to take the angle of the floor, okay, and just create the top part, part of that crown molding. Oops, my ruler moved. That happens. You know, my kids know I don't like to use uh, erasers very often. So there's my crown molding. It's a little off right here. Got a little eraser spot right here that I can do. But really, it's not any big deal. You get the idea. So now, since we have our floor, our corner, and our walls in here, this is when we can start adding things like our light, which would go about right here, because this is this back wall. And also, I could add that painting. So we could do either one. I think let's do the painting first. We're going to do it the same way, because it runs parallel, you'll see it runs parallel, the side of the, of the painting runs parallel to the wall. So this is how walls and corners really can help us draw. So if I wanna see, let's see, so the wall is about an inch, let's say it's about, you know, it's about a, actually not an inch, about a rulers. So I'm gonna go in probably three inches from the inside, maybe three and a half inches and just put a little mark there to start the side of my painting. So I want us to decide how, how big my painting is. Well, there's a lot of room on the bottom here. There's a, there's a little bit less room on the top. 
So if I do my full ruler, let's go down about three inches and then I can kind of have a little bit more room on the bottom. So let's go around about seven inches, okay? So we can do, since it's parallel to the floor, it might not be exactly the same, but it is actually, the bottom's gonna be just a little slanted. Now that's where it gets a little difficult is where you, you are getting like the slants and things like that. And then I just kind of create my little square piece of artwork, okay? Now I'm not gonna go in there and do details right now because I'm just making placement marks for what I'm seeing in this scenario, okay? There's also a chair down here, chair down here, I should say, that um, we can add in later. But that's something, first you wanna do what's behind everything. So I wouldn't wanna do the, do the light first because that's actually forward a little bit in front of my, the painting here. So we always wanna start from the background, just like Bob Ross does, where he does all of everything from the far in the background and then he moves forward. There's a reason for that. Okay, so let's go up and do this lamp now. So the lamp's on the ceiling, so we can kind of, I don't think where it actually meets the ceiling, so it's kind of like the view, the view that you have right now in your video. You're not, I'm not able to see on my picture where it actually meets the ceiling. So what I'm gonna do is it only, in my view, only touches the painting just a little bit. So I'm gonna actually use this dot right here as the kind of center point of where um, this is gonna go. So in the center of that, that um, chandelier, there is a kind of globe here. And then what I can do is from that, extend it up to the ceiling, all right, extend it up to the ceiling. Um, I can see the, the ceiling mark, so I think I am going to actually put that in. You don't have to, it depends on what you're seeing, but if where I'm sitting at, I can see it. And then I can just go in and start adding all of that kind of detail um, as I go. Okay, so it's not essential that you put in all the detailings in until you have everything kind of placed where you want them. Okay. Um, so I could go in and do this chair. Let's just place it. I'm not going to go in and do the entire chair. You'll see in your view that the chair is sitting a little bit over here from the painting. It's jammed out. It starts down just a little bit below it. So I'm just going to put a little mark there to remind me. And it also starts, let's see, it also starts, it's hard doing it from this side because it, so it starts a little below and it also starts a little bit to the side. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and just start with the back. Oh, let's see how wide it is though. So if my painting is about four and a half inches, I'd say the chair is about half of that. So let's just make it, oh, about two and a half inches, less than two and a half inches wide. Uh-oh, that angle's not right, can you tell? So I need to, I need to fix that so that it is parallel, somewhat more parallel with the bottom of that painting. And then that's when you can start doing the back of the chair to meet the, the cushion of the chair. And everything is connected. So if you can find the way it's connected, so this would be the cushion. It looks like it's a little bit not long enough. So if you just go and you just find how everything's connected, you're going to be able to create your room, okay? Now I'm to the legs. So I could actually, because the legs go right over the wall, come down about here, okay? So I'm just, I'm just freehanding it right now because I don't want this video to be too much longer, okay? And then of course, where the chair is, it's sitting in front and it's not transparent, it's opaque can't see through the chair, we don't want to see that crown mold in, okay? And then you do, you know, and then there's going to be the, I can't actually see the, the back, the back is about right here. And then 
that back leg is about right there. Okay. Okay. So your challenge is this week is to find a corner. Here, let me get in front. Is to find a corner in, in your home, any place. It can be um, it can be a porch. It could be anywhere that you like to be. Um, you can include animals in it, um, but it's almost like a room still life. And your challenge is to find, start with the corner and find everything that connects. I'm gonna try and put on Van Gogh's uh, bedroom as an example of how you can use those corners and then place everything inside um, as a really great way to frame um, a drawing or a picture. It also helps you really learn distance and then how things relate to each other because basically all of this is, is parallel lines and how they relate to one another, okay? I believe in you, I'm so proud of you, and I'm so glad we get to meet every week. I just thought this one would be better if I, if I uh, filmed it first, and I hope that you can actually see what I was doing here. I apologize, I know this is kind of hard with just the one camera. So, till next time, bye. Don't get frustrated, Keep, work through it. That's the only way you're gonna learn. So it's not gonna look like this, okay? But as long as you start understanding how things are connected, when you're in a space and you're in a room, if you look at a building, everything's connected. That's how the building gets, really gets built. It's the same thing as a room. You put a chair next to something because it fits well. Well, how do they relate to each other? Are they parallel? Is there something going this way that brings it together so that they can connect? So I want you to start thinking about that and then rendering it on your paper, all right? I believe in you, bye. Bye.